Hello and welcome to Lecture 13 of our class From Data to Decisions. I'm Chris Mack, your professor for this course, and this lecture is on how to test for skewness. You might recall that we're trying to understand the assumptions that go into ordinary least squares regression, and one of those assumptions is that the distribution of the residuals is normal. So we'd like to uh, test our residuals to find out if that's a reasonable assumption. And one way to test is to test for the skewness of the distribution. As we'll see, a normal distribution is non-skewed. It's completely symmetric left to right. Uh, so we'd like to test to see if we detect any skewness in our distribution. If we do, that's an indication that we do not have a normal distribution. Uh, this is a form of moment testing, and we're going to talk about two types of moments, the skewness and the kurtosis, which we'll talk about in our next lecture. So what is a moment? A moment is the ver random variable to some power multiplied by the probability distribution function, PDF, uh, and then integrated uh, over all possible values. The kth moment will take that variable to the kth power. We're going to use the kth centered moment. By centered, it means we take our, our data, our variable, and we subtract off its mean. Then we take that to the kth power, uh, multiply it by the probability of the occurrence of that value of x, integrate, and that becomes our kth centered moment. Uh, if, we, if we didn't center it, if we didn't let mu, subtract off mu from the data, and we use k equal 1, this would be the equation for the mean. Based on the PDF, this is the definition of the mean value. Because we're subtracting off the mean mu, our first centered moment is going to be 0. That's because we centered it, right? So we shifted it so that the center of the distribution, the mean of the distribution, is 0. So mu1 will be 0 almost by definition. But all the other moments, the second moment, the third moment, etc., may not be zero. In fact, the second moment, the second centered moment, is what we call the variance. Mu2 is nothing more than sigma squared, variance of this distribution. We often uh, standardize our moments by simply dividing by mu sub k, dividing mu sub k by the standard deviation to the kth power. This uh, normalizes it based on the spread uh, so uh, that, that it's easier to make comparisons of one distribution to another. And it will be these kth standardized centered moments that we're going to be interested in here. Well, that's how we calculate a moment if we know what the distribution is. But what if we just have a sample? If we collect a, a set of n data points, we can estimate the kth centered moment by this equation. So this is our estimator. m sub k is our estimator for mu sub k. And it just takes the sample mean, x bar, and then centers all the data, subtract off the sample mean, raise that to the kth power, and sum them all up, or find the average of, of that value to the kth power. That's all that is. Uh, if we have the second centered uh, moment, that means k equals 2, and we have our standard equation for the variance. The square root of that variance is the standard deviation. So this is our, well, it's biased, because uh, we divide by n instead of n minus 1. But nonetheless, this is our estimator for the standard deviation. And therefore, uh, our estimator for the standardized kth moment will be this equation divided by this equation to the kth power. All right, let's see what those standardized moments might look like in the case of a normal distribution. We can calculate these, any of these moments analytically for a normal distribution, and here's the result. If I have k an odd number, then those standardized moments are all zero. This is because we have a symmetric distribution. Any symmetric distribution will have all of the odd moments equal to zero. Even, 
Even moments will not be zero. And for k even, this is the equation you get. We're only going to be interested in the third and fourth standardized. And for a normal distribution, the third moment is zero and the fourth moment is three. As I said, we're going to talk about the fourth moment, which we call kurtosis, in the next lecture. So we're going to look at this third standardized moment, and we'll call it the skewness of our distribution. Uh, even though in generic terms I, I use this, this symbol phi sub 3 for the third standardized moment, uh, we're going to call it gamma 1 um, here because that's just a, a standard terminology that people in statistics use. Uh, old notation was the square root of beta 1. Uh, Thank goodness we got rid of the old notation. Square root sign just showing up. Uh, and we use the symbol gamma 1. So I won't use this old notation, but you might find it in some papers, old textbooks that you look at. So gamma 1 will mean the skewness, and it's nothing more than the standardized third centered moment of the distribution. If we have a unimodal distribution, and that's all we're going to deal with here, uh, then it's easy to interpret what gamma 1 means. If gamma 1 is positive, it means our, our distribution is skewed to the right. The tail is longer to the right, just like here. If gamma is negative, that means it's skewed left. The tail goes for a long ways on the left. And if gamma 1 is 0, that means we have a symmetric distribution. Uh, so we can look at the sign of gamma 1 to tell us which direction it's skewed, and the magnitude of gamma 1 to see how skewed it is. Here's an example of a distribution that skewed the gamma distribution. The equation for the uh, PDF is shown here. It has two parameters, alpha and beta. Uh, this distribution is defined for x greater than 0, and alpha and beta both have to be greater than 0 as well. The mean of this distribution is alpha divided by beta. The variance of the di distribution is alpha divided by beta squared. And so that's the first moment, the second centered moment. Skewness, the third centered moment, is uh, uh, divided by, uh, or, or standardized, uh, is 2 over the square root of alpha. And uh, I'll define this term in the next lecture. The excess kurtosis is also given. Uh, so this kind of shows a classical skewed distribution shape. Uh, but how skewed it is depends on specifically the parameter alpha. And the larger the value of alpha, the less skewed it is. Here's another example of a distribution that's skewed. And this is a discrete distribution with the probability mass function given in this equation here. The parameter lambda defines it. It's also uh, based on positive values of k, the number of counts. And uh, lambda has to be positive as well. The mean is lambda. The variance is lambda. That characterizes a Poisson distribution. Mean equals the variance. And the skewness is 1 over the square root of lambda. So as before, when the parameter lambda gets larger, uh, we see the skewness going down. And in fact, if lambda is sufficiently large, it looks reasonably symmetric in its distribution. All right, so those are just some examples of, of distributions that are not symmetric, that have skew in them naturally. Let's look at how we estimate the skewness from a sample. We already looked at uh, our sample estimators for um, centered moments. Uh, we can combine them to get an estimate of gamma 1. So we'll call our sample estimate of gamma 1 G1. I'll continue to use that notation where I switch from a Greek letter to a Roman letter when I want to estimate um, using sample data. So these are all things that can be easily calculated in a spreadsheet. Calculate the mean, center the data by subtracting off the mean, take it to a certain power, and, and find the average of that. Uh, what is this? Gamma G1 um, estimator like? Oh, like any statistic, we ask about its sampling distribution. Sampling distribution means if I randomly collected n data points, I get a certain 
B1, but if I collected a different set of N data points, I get a slightly different value of G1. And if I repeat that over and over and over again with lots of different samples, I'll get different values for G1. I can create a distribution of values of G1. We call that the sampling distribution. Well, as N gets large, the sampling distribution of G1 becomes more and more normal. In fact, it becomes normal with a mean of zero and a variance of six over N. Unfortunately, for small samples, this estimator is biased, and so uh, we, we can correct the bias in this estimator. Uh, the correction is just taking G1 and multiplying it by this factor. Um, you can see quite clearly that as N gets large, this factor approaches one and the bias disappears. But if N is reasonably small, the factor is not insignificant. Uh, and it's best to include it. And of course, if you type in a spreadsheet formula, you can just as easily include it as not. So we're going to use the unbiased estimator, which I'll call capital G1, for our sample skewness. The standard error of this estimator is given by this equation, which is approximately the square root of 6 over n. And here's the paper that, that worked out all the details uh, of this standard error. We can use these statistics to do a skewness test. Our null hypothesis will be that gamma 1 equals 0. In other words, our null hypothesis is we have a normal distribution, or at least, in this case, a symmetric distribution, and gamma 1 equals 0. Our test statistic will be G1 divided by the standard error of G1. The reason we divide by the standard error is, error is to normalize uh, that that test statistic as a function of the number of data points n. And if the number of data points n exceeds about 20, then it's reasonable to say that this test statistic, G1 divided by the standard error of G1, is approximately standard normal. Standard normal means mean of 0, standard deviation of 1. Because we're trying to test the null hypothesis that gamma 1 equals 0, if it's either positively skewed or negatively skewed, consider that a failure of our test and a failure of the assumption of a normal distribution. So we're going to perform a two-tailed test with this test statistic. Now, because it's normally distributed, you can use a critical z value from a table of normal distributions. For example, for alpha of 0.05, typical 95% confidence interval, uh, the critical Z value is 1.96. And uh, uh, all the other critical Z values that you're, you're used to seeing tests on normal distributions are applicable here as well. And so we just do our, our standard uh, test against the critical Z value. If that statistic is greater than, say, 1.96 for alpha of 0.05, and we reject the null hypothesis that the distribution is symmetric. Now, there are other skewness met metrics that some people use. We're only going to use this um, moment test uh, in this class, but other people do some other things. So I'll just mention that one of the characteristics of a skewed distribution is that the mean is not equal to the median is not equal to the mode. And the most common, but certainly not the only way that can happen, is that the mean is bigger than the median, and the median is bigger than the mode. Uh, because of that, Carl Pearson, one of the most famous statisticians uh, of about a century ago, uh, looked at the difference between the mean and the mode, the difference between the mean and the median, normalized by the standard deviation, and called those two different uh, skewness metrics, which also can be measured and tested. Um, there's also a robust skewness coefficient. We haven't talked really about robustness yet, but we will. And quartiles are robust, whereas uh, means are not. Uh, so uh, uh, one uh, uh, ro a skewness coefficient based on quartiles is given here, where we have the first, second, and third quartile in the skewness metric. So you might, from time to time, see other people using these measures of skewness. Uh, we're not going to use them further in this class. We're going to use moment testing to do our tests. 
So let's ask, what have we learned in this lecture, lecture 13? How is the skewness defined? You should be able to quickly and easily answer that. In my case, in, in our class, I'm not going to expect you to memorize any of these formulas. So you, in tests and in homework, you can always just look up the formula. Um, but nonetheless, you need to know what formula to look for. So which is the right formula? How is skewness defined? For positive skewness, what is the shape of the PDF? Likewise, for negative skewness, what is the shape of the probability distribution function? And finally, you should be able to test a set of data from a sample for skewness. What is the right test statistic to use? What is its sampling distribution? Uh, can you perform these kinds of tests, for example, in Excel? Well, that's lecture 13. In the next lecture, we'll do another moment test, this time for excess kurtosis. Till then.